Delta Kappa Epsilon has a long history at Yale University. The fraternity was founded at the Ivy League School in 1855 and went on to become a national Greek organization. As of fall 2010, they must wait five years before they are allowed to actively recruit new members. The Deeks, as they are known on campus, recently got themselves into trouble when video surfaced of new pledges marching across campus chanting, No means yes, yes means hail. No means yes, yes means hail. No means yes, yes means hail. This happened by the Women's Center, in the dorms where the freshman girls were living. Mary Miller, Dean of Yale, doled out the punishment, which included restrictions on recruitment and use of the Yale name and facilities. The head of the national chapter of DKE was of the opinion that this was too harsh a punishment. His reasoning? The excuse is old as time. Boys will be boys. It's hard to believe that even in the 21st century, such an excuse would still be used to condone the actions of college-aged men. It's, it's a fallback on this gender dichotomy that's a fiction um, in order to protect men um, and really protect ourselves from, from what might happen if we tried to disrupt that binary and really try to get at the root of why these issues are happening in the first place. Uh, boys actually hear that at a young age. And basically what that is, when I hear boys will be boys, I hear like an exercise of male privilege. It's almost like a rites of passage where these men try to impress other men. So to, to talk about women uh, in a debasing way or to feel impartial or as if you don't care when you hear these problematic uh, conversations that other men have, I see that as an extension of this, well, boys will be boys, excuses men's behavior and it all and it also condones it as well oh actually i um was reading an article uh about that phrase and uh i think it's ridiculous um and super limiting to to men and kind of insulting to men like the assumption that uh it's like natural and inherent for men to be either like aggressive or um sexual like overly sexual or, um, you know, not emotional or whatever kind of the connotations are that go with that phrase. It's really limiting to kind of assume that that's like, the no that, that that's like normal and inherent in men. We need to, to stop blaming men altogether. You know what I mean? It's not boys will be boys. It's some boys committing these things, right? Some men committing these things. And, and overall, I think it's an insult to men because I think a lot, a lot of men know that, that sexual assault is, is wrong, know that it's a problem, and would, would try to stop you know, something like that from happening. It's not about being boys because, hey, guess how many people I know who didn't do that? Lots. And I'm not saying that makes them good people. I'm not saying, oh, well, because they didn't do it, they're better. No, I'm saying that the norm is not that. I facilitate a lot of dialogues with classes of especially college students, and so this comes up, you know, well, men can't control themselves, that's just how they are, you know, and, and what I usually come back with is, wow, that, that, that's really terrible, I, I really think that that's an insult toward men, I think that it takes away men's agency, I think it makes men seem like they're animals, like they don't have any, any individual choice, and that they're just programmed to go around and sexual, sexually assault people. I want to be mad at the, the men themselves, and on the other hand, I just am mad more at the culture that would make that happen. It doesn't make it okay, any, any more okay than you would say, well, boys will be boys in response to someone, you know, hitting your car or something like that. It's, it's just as inappropriate then. It's, it's a cop-out, you know, it's, it's sort of a faux logic that breaks down as soon as you actually put any thought into it. I would have to call BS on it right away, um, just because I think that people should be held accountable for their actions more than just relying on that sort of trope as being kind of the excuse. The overarching system of gender and the way we normalize gender violence on a daily basis through the media, through our language, um, through the ways that we let things happen to other people all the time. Um, that we also should take the larger system into account when we're looking at these issues of violence. So, and that, and that, that I think helps us understand why that act may have taken place. I don't think that that takes away any responsibility. And when we say boys will be boys, uh, what it also does, it also gives men the license to stay in what we call arrested development. 
It becomes difficult to facilitate discussions between men and women, and to create an environment where they can learn to relate to one another when this sort of trope is used to divide them further, and keep them from realizing that they don't fall so easily into the role of passive victim and violent aggressor. We talked about the rhetoric of those young men. The rhetoric of those young men and where those young men were saying those things, it was what we call a hyper-masculine performance. So not only were they performing, uh, they were also trying to prove something to themselves. You can't end violence by dealing with that one situation, but at the same time that one situation sets, sets up a precedent for how we then deal with these, these issues across the United States. One of six women experience um, sexual assault specifically um, in the general population, but on college campuses that statistic is actually higher. It's about one in four. The culture that we live in currently actually supports rape culture. How would these, these young men who chatted that would think that it was okay? So the, the, the fact that they even think it's okay means that we got a lot of work to do culturally to, uh, to, to address this issue. Once you start talking about it, everybody knows somebody who has, or, or is somebody who has experienced, you know, rape or molestation or sexual assault or, or domestic violence or something like that. Like it's, it's something that like everybody can relate to if you, mostly if you stop framing it as someone else's problem. Universities ignore the statistics that a quarter of their female students will be assaulted in their time on campus because such figures make them look like an unsafe place to get a college education. These figures won't be diminished if they keep getting swept under the rug. It might make their campus look bad, um, might make it look less safe, which we know isn't the reality. Like all these campuses are, you know, um, generally pretty similar in terms of safety. We usually have universities that are what, what I call reactionary versus proactive. So basically, they don't want to hear about sexual assault, they don't want to hear about these issues as being germane or pertinent until something actually comes up. When an incident comes up, then you have people flock to it, run to like, well, what do we have? What are we doing for this particular issue until it subsides or go away? Schools are such an important institution, and they're and they're so pervasive in the news and things like that. That I think that the school has a huge responsibility to do as much as they can to kind of prevent these things from happening, to show that, that it's not okay, you know, and um, to kind of provide examples for other schools, you know, where this is happening also. The problem is, is that the resources and getting the top administrators to buy into this because the administrators have to set the tone for the campus. They have to say sexual assault will not be, a t uh, be tolerated. Violence against women will not be tolerated on this campus. And it's an issue of economics as well that doesn't like read well, I guess, when people are recruiting students. So what can we do to fight back against the rape culture that has invaded college campuses? How can we begin to create a safer space for female students and male students to interact and develop into sexually healthy adults? Instead of trying to find ways to kind of justify why no may not mean no, why don't we talk about an enthusiastic yes? We need, we need a culture in which it's all about yes. <laughs> it's all about asking and it's all about yes. We need a sex positive culture that says sex. It's great when it's consensual and both people want it, instead of focusing so much on no. Just because this story is fallen out of the news doesn't mean we should stop talking about it. It is up to each and every one of us to question the problematic things we see, hear, and experience on college campuses. Because if we aren't speaking up, then the silence is deafening. No,